Welcome to the RC3. Hello everyone, welcome to the talk of Tobi Buchberger from FH Campus Wien. He will talk about the special feature of TOX, a new kind of distributed instant messenger. Tobi will talk about the authenticated key exchange in TOX and how to do it right and secure. If you have any questions on the talk, please click on the chat tab below the video and leave us a message. Thank you. So, welcome Tobi. Yeah, welcome everybody to my talk about adopting the noise key exchange in TOX. Um, in this talk, I will present the results of my master thesis, which I conducted this year, also on FA Campus Wien. Yeah, and I will start by shortly explaining what is TOX. TOX is a peer-to-peer -peer messaging protocol and a free and open source library implementation thereof. Um, it, this protocol provides features like instant messaging, voice calls, video calls, screen uh, and screen or file sharing. Um, the development of TOX started in 2013 as a reaction to, the, to Snowden's leaks regarding the NSA's mass surveillance of the internet and is intended as an end-to-end -end encrypted distributed Skype replacement. And to avoid confusion, a short uh, intro to the terminology in the context of TOX. Um, so there is TOX, which is the name of the protocol in general. Then there is the implementation of the TOX protocol, which is called TOXCore. This is a network library written in C. Uh, and the clients, so the actual check clients that use TOXCore have specific names, um, like UTOX, for example. So then a few more details on TOX. Um, it is based on a cryptographic network library from Daniel J. Bernstein, which is called SALT. And the protocol consists of multiple, uh, multiple modules. Um, and the module which is relevant for this talk is the NetScript module, where the, uh, where the handshake is implemented. But there are other modules like uh, a distributed hash table module and a, a general crypto module and so on. The cryptographic primitives that are used in talks are the x25519 diffie hellman function for the key exchange the X Salsa 20, uh, Salsa 20 stream cipher for symmetric encryption and Poly 1305 for authentication. Then there is a distributed hash table, which is used to store peer information. And um, to add a friend in TOX, you need uh, uh, this user's TOX ID. Um, and this TOX ID includes the static long-term public key of this user. So why am I doing this talk? Um, because there is a problem in, in the TOX handshake. Um, and um, yeah, for TOX uh, to establish an end-to-end -end encrypted communications channel, there is something that is called an authenticated key exchange. And authenticated key exchanges are protocols to set up a shared secret key for a communication session. Um, this enables two parties to communicate securely over an untrusted public network like the internet. And uh, such protocols are, for example, based on asymmetric cryptography like diffie hellman And the, uh, the problem in TOX authenticated key exchange is that users are possibly affected by a so-called key compromise impersonation vulnerability. Um, this vulnerability is in the TOX handshake uh, because it is a home-brewed uh, cryptographic protocol. Um, and uh, shortly, what does KC, KCI mean? Um, so key compromise imperson uh, impersonation enables uh, reverse impersonation if a static long-term private key of a user is stolen. So if an attacker uh, stole the private key of a user, um, it is trivial to impersonate this user because if in TOX, if you stole the key of someone, um, you are more or less this person in TOX. And so you can start up a TOX client using that key and you are this person. But with KCI, it gets even worse because um, an attacker can also impersonate other people to you. So other TOX, uh, so he can impersonate your TOX friends to you. So you, 
So he uses your key and you then think you are talking to a friend of yours, but actually you are talking to someone else. So, and this KCI vulnerability can also be used to mount many of the middle attacks. Um, the vulnerability uh, was reported by Jason Donnerfeld in 2017, where Jason Donnerfeld is the creator of the WireGuard VPN. So, to, uh, to understand what this KCI issue is about, I will shortly explain how the Tox handshake looks like. So, in a, in a and in the Tox handshake, there is an initiator, which is called Alice, and a responder, which is called Bob. And um, in fact, uh, both peers can be initiated and respond at the same time. But to uh, simplify this explanation, I will assume that only one peer is initiator. So, um, and at the beginning of the Tox handshake, there is a cookie phase, um, which is in place um, to um, mitigate some kind of uh, denial of service attacks. Then there is an authenticated key exchange phase, uh, which is in place to establish a, a shared secret key to encrypt the packets afterwards. And it, in the end, then there is a transport phase where just uh, encrypted pack uh, packets or messages uh, or audio packets, etc., are exchanged. So uh, during such a tox handshake um, to establish this end to end decrypted uh, communications channel, there are in total three X25519 uh, key pairs involved. There is a key pair necessary for the uh, cookie phase of the handshake, uh, which, is got, uh, which is a distributed hash table key pair. Then there is a static long term key pair used during the uh, authenticated key exchange. Um, so this uh, public key is the one that's also included in the talk setting. And then there is an ephemeral key pair used, uh, which is then uh, there to establish this uh, session secret key and to use, the, uh, to use this key afterwards by using symmetric cryptography. Uh, and symmetric cryptography in Tox is uh, established by using uh, X also 20 poly 13 file. So let's shortly take a look at, how, uh, at the authenticated key exchange phase of the Tox handshake. Um, so as I said, uh, uh, both peers that want to um, perform such a handshake need to uh, own a static long-term key pair, uh, which identifies them, and an ephemeral key pair to establish the session secret. And um, uh, uh, the peer is, is the initiator of the Handshake and peer Bob, which is abbreviated with B, is the responder to the handshake. And it starts like that. Um, Alice sends the handshake message to Bob. Um, this handshake message um, is encrypted by using a shared secret, which is based on the static long term keys, uh, the private key of Alice and the public key of Bob. This, uh, this key is then used uh, to encrypt the ephemeral public key from Alice for this session. Then Bob does the same here by responding with a handshake message um, to, to Alice. And uh, Bob um, uses his static private key and the public key from Alice and encrypts uh, his uh, ephemeral public key. After both peers successfully receive the handshake message of the uh, other peer, they can use the uh, elliptic curve defehmen operation to calculate the, uh, the same shared secret session key. Um, Alice by using her ephemeral private key, Bob by using his ephemeral private key, and by using uh, the ephemeral public key from the other peer. So um, what does this authenticated key exchange uh, um, provide for security? Um, this authenticated key exchange, as it is currently, provides forward secrecy. Uh, it also provides mutual authentication, which means that uh, both parties get authenticated during the handshake. Also, it provides key confirmation, which means that both peers uh, prove the possession of the secret key. And it also provides deniability, um, which means that Tox users can deny having taken part in a specific communication session because the communications are authenticated but not signed. Um, but uh, as I said, um, it provides no KCI resistance, therefore it is vulnerable to KCI attacks. So I will show you now how a simplified KCI attack work, works. Um, to perform such a KCI attack, there need to be a few prerequisites met. 
Um, so our setting is that the attacker, which is called Mallory, uh, abbreviated with M, impersonates uh, Bob to Alice. Um, to do so, um, it is necessary that Bob is a box friend of Alice. And then the attacker Mallory needs to compromise the static long-term private key from Alice. He also needs to know the static long-term public key from Bob, for example, uh, by, by knowing his tox ID. And he also needs to generate an ephemeral text 25519 key pair. So by, to perform such an attack, um, um, uh, it, is, it works like this. Um, so in this case, um, uh, the attacker Mallory is sending a handshake message to Alice, and he does so by using the the, uh, the same shared secret as Alice would generate by uh, by using Alice's private key and Bob's public key. With this, he can encrypt the ephemeral uh, his ephemeral public key. Then Alice will think it. Uh, he, uh, she received a handshake message from Bob, and will answer the handshake message with the same shared secret. Also, can connect it with the same private key and the same public key as the attacker, and encrypting their ephemeral public key. And in the end, uh, the attacker and Alice are uh, both able to derive the same shared session key um, by again using the exchanged um, public keys from the other and their private key. So, um, but um, during my research, I found out that the, uh, uh, so um, as I said, uh, this vulnerability can be used to mount a man -to middle attack on a TOX session. Um, but during my research, I found out that the, the uh, DHT key pairs involved in the cookie phase of the handshake which uh, make an actual KCI attack on the TOX handshake more complicated. This is because um, of this cookie phase, uh, the attacker Mallory is not able to send valid cookie request or response packet on their own, which means um, that it is necessary that he, uh, Alice and Bob uh, need to be online at the same time and initiate a handshake on their own. So uh, the attacker is not able to initiate uh, handshake on his own, as I uh, showed you on the slide before. And if Alice and Bob uh, initiate the handshake, then the attacker Mallory needs to interfere with the handshake packets after the cookie phase. Um, he does so by intercepting the handshake packet from Alice. This handshake packet contains enough information to send valid handshake packets to both peers. Then um, uh, the attacker performs a handshake with, with Alice and Bob separately and this establishes two connections. And uh, therefore, he also needs uh, even more key pairs for both connections. And if this uh, was successful, then the attacker is now able to eavesdrop, modify, insert, or drop messages, which are exchanged between Alice and Bob. And Alice and Bob uh, just think they are just talking to each other like normally. So as people don't like uh, just to hear about theoretical vulnerabilities, but uh, also want to see actual exploit of these vulnerabilities, I tried to implement such a man the middle attack program. But I discovered a few more difficulties uh, for this attack. Um, because um, if the attacker is using Alice a private key to start the Toxcore instance, like Tox is designed, um, it, uh, this Tox guy instance from the attacker would announce itself in the distributed hash table. So if Alice and the attacker use the same private key at the same time, this would mess up the, the state in the distributed hash table. And um, yeah, I didn't find out if it's possible to start the Tox guy instance without announcing the distributed hash table because this would require more detailed understanding of the DHT module, and I didn't have time to look at this in detail during my thesis. So um, this may, um, maybe there is a solution to this problem, but if, if not, this attack may not be possible at all to exploit in, in practice. Additionally, it would be necessary to adapt Tox for further, um, to be able to use the handshake information from uh, the, the handshake information from 
one uh, from my peer in one handshake in a handshake with another peer. So if I intercept as a tepper the packet from Alice, I need to use the uh, the information from Alice handshake packet in the in the connection with Bob. And there would also be needed to uh, implement a way to pass messages between two tox connections, um, because otherwise the attacker would need to paste their messages manually. Um, overall, this means that a complete redesign of the ToxCon library would be necessary to possibly make this uh, attack um, um, available, um, which means that unfortunately I cannot show you a POC attack, um, but I will show you a proof of concept of the of a KCI resistant talk handshake implementation. So how did I fix the KCI vulnerability in the talk handshake? Um, there is a framework which is called noise. Um, this framework can be used to create uh, so-called secure channel protocols based on the Fehelman key agreement. Um, a secure channel protocol is, for example, SSL or TLS or SSH. Um, this framework was created by Trevor Perry, who is the co-author of the Signal protocol, so from the Signal Messenger. Um, this framework provides formally verified authenticated key exchange constructions, um, um, which are also designed to protect against this uh, KCI vulnerability. And the framework is there so that um, um, developers don't do not roll their own crypto so and just use the formally verified construction from noise instead. And um, crypto protocols based on this noise framework are already used in, for example, uh, the WireGuard VPN. Uh, it's also used in WhatsApp for client-to-server communication, and it's also used in uh, Slack, for example, for internal server-to-server communication. And um, I didn't implement um, the noise framework myself, uh, but instead I used uh, the, an available open source library, which is called Noise C. And this is just a C implementation of the noise framework, which was uh, implemented by Bruce Medley. So short, uh, shortly an introduction to the, to the noise protocol framework. In a crypto protocol based on, on noise, um, the parties involved have e uh, either long stem uh, static DFM key pairs and or ephemeral DFM key pairs. Um, yeah, every noise protocol starts with two parties exchanging handshake messages. Um, there are different handshake patterns, uh, patterns available in the noise framework. These define um, which DFM public keys uh, are, ex are exchanged and uh, a sequence of Diffie-Hellman operations uh, which is performed. The results of these Diffie-Hellman operations get hashed into a shared secret keys, which are used uh, later to send encrypted transport messages. And the handshake messages, which are exchanged in the noise protocol, uh, can already contain encrypted application chosen payloads. And such a noise handshake pattern is instantiated by a specific Diffie-Hellman functions, uh, cipher functions, and hash functions to give a concrete noise protocol. And in the noise specification, there is defined which cryptographic primitives are available. So how does uh, a noise protocol for talks look like? Um, so as I, as I already mentioned, um, there are these public keys which are exchanged using the, the TOX IDs in advance. So um, TOX users uh, friend each other. Um, so these are exchanged out of the band, for example, via email. Um, the matching um, noise pattern for this is called KK. Um, but I discovered that in the actual um, Tox core implementation, the responder of a Tox connection receives the public key of the initiator uh, from the initiator's handshake packet. Um, so therefore, the, this is not uh, compatible with the KK pattern, because to be able to receive a noise-based handshake message, it is necessary to initialize a handshake state uh, beforehand with both peer static long-term keys. Um, but uh, yeah, so currently the tox handshake is, is incompatible with the KK pattern, um, but it may be possible to use the KK pattern by redesigning a little, uh, the script structure a little bit. 
so uh, I didn't want to do that yet. Um, therefore, my solution was to use the so-called IT handshake pattern. Um, this handshake pattern um, requires that the initiator sends his static public key uh, already encrypted in the handshake message. Um, from a security point of view, it doesn't make a difference uh, if I use the KK or the IT pattern because they both provide the same security properties, including the uh, KCR resistance. So uh, we'll shortly show you how such a um, handshake pattern looks like in noise. So there is a, a pre-message from the responder to the initiator where he sent his static public key. Then uh, this is the delimiter for the active exchanged handshake messages. And then the first message is sent by the initiator. This includes the, the initiator's ephemeral public key, then already a deferment operation, um, which already um, gives us a secret key. This is used to encrypt the initiator static public key, and then there is another deferment operation performed. Then the responder answers by sending his ephemeral public key, performing and performing two uh, additional deferment operations, which are uh, all uh, hashed into the same shared secret key. And this is the, the handshake pattern. And the full noise protocol that is used in Toxt is, is shown here. Um, so this string just tells us that the noise IK pattern is used, that the uh, x25519 diffie function is used, then Chacha20 is used as stream cipher for symmetric encryption, there is poly 5 used for authentication, and the SHA512 hash function. Um, this noise protocol provides zero round tip time encryption, um, which means that in the, uh, in the handshake messages, there are already uh, encrypted payloads. And, um, but you need to be aware of that the security properties for the handshake payloads are weaker than for the transport payloads. Then. The eight phase uh, is 1.5 round trip time. Um, because so this would be one round trip, um, which means that one, one message from the initiator and one from the responder. Um, but the egg phase is 1.5 round trip time um, because uh, this is because the responder needs to receive the first transport message from the initiator to be assured of forward secrecy. And then the, the result of, of a handshake based on this noise protocol uh, are two so called cipher state uh, objects. And the cipher state objects contain a key used for symmetric encryption and the corresponding nonce. And this is uh, for the uh, yeah, symmetric encryption. So um, how does this noise protocol fit in the in the TOX handshake? Um, uh, as I mentioned, there are three phases. And the first phase, the cookie phase, remains unchanged uh, in this noise-based handshake. Um, and as you may already noticed, um, the handshake payload encryption uses Chacha 20 instead of x 20, uh, which is uh, used in other places in talks. This is because x 20 is not supported by the noise framework. Um, then in the transport phase, um, there are two symmetric key use, uh, keys used instead of one, um, because there is one key for encrypting packets uh, to send them to the other peer and one key for decrypting packets received by the other peer. And um, so this, uh, this noise-based handshake using this noise protocol is now a formally verified construction instead of a home brute protocol like before. Um, and I implemented this noise protocol in, in the in Toxcar in two different approaches. Um, my, in my first approach, I used a Charger 20 for encryption during the handshake and also during the transport phase. And in my second approach, I used Charger 20 during the handshake phase and it then exacts the 20 during the transport phase. And I will now shortly explain why there are these two different approaches. In the Charger 20 based approach, um, I just adapted the uh, existing functions uh, uh, in Toxcore for the handshake to um, to the new handshake, and it was uh, this was possible um, by only adding one new function and only uh, adapt the existing functions. 
um, the handshake packets uh, look now slightly different because the this is because the firmware public keys uh, are sent unencrypted uh, and the initiator needs to include his encrypted static long-term key. Um, you may remember from, from the slides before that in the old vulnerable handshake, the ephemeral public keys were sent encrypted and it was not necessary for the initiator to include his encrypted strong, static long-term key. Also, um, I didn't include a base nonce in the, in the handshake packets because the nonces are now handled by in, in this cyber state object by, by the noise C library. And um, I adapted the functions in Toxcall, which are used to encrypt and decrypt messages, to use noise C functions uh, based on Charger 20 instead of the X 20 based functions which are in Toxcall. So then I finished this implementation, then I, then I uh, needed to test it. Uh, I, do, I did this by building my modified version of Toxcore together with Minitox, uh, which is a minimal Tox client, and uh, together with NoiseC. Then I started multiple Minitox instances on a, a Debian VMware. Um, and then I added these Minitox instances uh, as friends and tested packet loss between these instances by using FlakeNet. And then I discovered that this implementation solution works only if there are no encrypted packets lost, uh, which is uh, most likely to happen with a UDB-based protocol. Um, this is because the nonces are saved in the cipher state. And if a packet is lost and, and uh, the next packet is received, then um, then the, the wrong nonce will be used for encryption and therefore the, the nonces for the sender and for the receiver are out of sync, which means that the decryption will not be possible. So the solution to this problem could be that the, the nonce um, could be sent together with an encrypted message and set, uh, after receiving set this nonce in the cipher state using a function which is provided by NoSC. Um, but I discovered that uh, the noise C library is not compliant with the noise specification in this case. Um, this is because the nonce needs to be greater or equal than the current nonce in the cipher state. But this is not always the case if packets rece uh, are received out of order. Um, also, uh, if I would uh, do this, um, I would need to implement a new packet loss functionality. Um, but there is already a packet loss functionality in Toxcore implemented, which is based on X as a pointy. So, which leads me to my second implementation approach. Um, uh, this implementation approach uses X as a pointy during the transport phase and is a solution to this packet loss problem from my first implementation. Um, because, uh, as I already mentioned, X as a pointy is not supported by the noise framework. Um, to circumvent this, I added two functions to the noise C library to be able to retrieve the symmetric keys after a successful handshake instead of this cipher state objects. Then I can use these symmetric keys with the existing x 20 poly encryption functions. And these functions are also using then the existing packet loss and out-of-order packet functionality in Toxcore. Um, this means that I need to include the base nonces again in the handshake packets, as it is the case in the KCI vulnerable handshake. After I finished this implementation, I tested it again um, by using uh, Minitox and FlakeNet. And uh, now I uh, discovered that uh, the handshakes are also successful if there are the, if there is up to 50% packets loss on both sides of the connection. And uh, also discovered that, uh, and I compared it to a, a normal handshake, uh, uh, so a non-noise-based handshake, and I discovered that if more than 50% packet loss is too much for Toxcore or for the Tox protocol in general to establish a, a stable connection. So, um, so my work is not finished here. Um, there is, is still some work to do in the future. Um, for example, I could uh, work uh, or I could continue working on the POC attack program, um, but with the, with the difficulties I mentioned, I most likely think that this vulnerability cannot be exploited in the wild. 
Um, there are a few other things I could work on. Um, as I mentioned, um, or um, so in the, in the in the noise based handshake, um, it's a noise will differentiate between an initiator and, and a responder. Um, but as I said, in the TOX protocol, as it is designed, the, uh, both peers can be initiated and responded at the same time. So this is not ideal in the, in the current implementation and could lead to practical problems, um, which means that the handshake could uh, take longer than an old KCI movable handshake. And also the, the error handling during the handshake implementation with further testing at review. Um, um, as I said, the noise-based handshake I implemented using the noise C library, um, where the noise C library uh, implements the, the whole noise framework and therefore supports all handshake patterns and crypto uh, cryptographic primitives. But there is not everything necessary for, for the usage in talks. Therefore, um, we could implement the noise AK pattern uh, explicitly for the use in talks then we would have no noise library as a dependency for Tox core and uh, in general, less lines of code, which means less possible vulnerable lines of code. Um, further future work could be a, a redesign of the Tox handshake. Um, as, a, as I said, um, the current proof of constant implementation of the noise-based handshake uses two different um, ciphers for symmetric encryption charge the 22 handshake and access 22 into transport phase. Um, this could maybe streamline to, streamlined to only use one of these two ciphers. Um, also, my noise-based handshake is currently not backwards compatible, uh, which means that um, clients using a TOXCore version with the KCI vulnerable handshake would not uh, be able to establish a connection to uh, the noise-based handshake TOXCore instances. And uh, by, when, when we already redesigned the TOX handshake, um, we could uh, maybe change the implementation to use the KK pattern instead of the IK pattern. There is also some other interesting uh, functionality which noise could provide. Um, noise uh, enables uh, session rekeying, uh, which means that the key used to, uh, for symmetric encryption could be updated after a defined number of messages. Also, it is possible with noise to add quantum resistance uh, by using an optional 256-bit pre-shared key. Um, um, this is, for example, already implemented in the, the Wirecard VPN. And besides the handshake, uh, it would be nice to conduct the full security analysis of the protocol and also of its implementation talks, so, because um, this wasn't done until now. So if you want to have additional information, there is the link to my, my full master thesis. Um, right before my talk, there was an introduction to Tox talk from, from Anthony from QTOX. Then there is uh, also a Tox crypto party, which is organized by SOF. And um, yeah, in general, for further information, you can visit us at our assembly and or and order or on the free node IRC channel. This is just a few, a few related work. These are the references that I used during the talk. And I thank you for your attention. And special thanks to Franconian.net and the Hackerspace Bamberg for hosting the talk. And now I'm open to questions. Yes, thanks a lot, Toby Buchberger, for your talk. Um, if you have any questions on this talk, please uh, use the addresses you see if you press the chat tab below the video, then you can send us a question. Um, there are no questions by now, but I have a personal question, Toby. Um, why is it called noise protocol? What is the noise in this protocol? Have you yeah. any idea about this? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know actually where the noise is coming from. Or okay. if I knew, I already forgot it. Okay, okay. So uh, maybe in such sophisticated talks, uh, people maybe have to think a bit about this, all this information you gave us, uh, because we have no questions so far. But again, thanks a lot for your talk and uh, hope to see you again.
Oh, one, one question from the IRC channel. Please wait a second. Oh, there's somebody on the IRC channel asking about um, uh, getting backwards compati compatibility um, by using a cookie which would indicate which kind of handshake the responder expects. Yes, uh, yeah, we, we already thought about uh, something similar. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so this uh, uh, this is a problem that can be solved, yeah. Okay, okay. And another question from the IRC channel is coming in. But <laughs> somebody making a joke. Is there a COVID-19 friendly way to <laughs> alternative to avoid handshakes between users but <laughs> uh, okay but this is this is just a joke i think um so covid 19 is uh, not a problem of using tox i think even if tox sounds a li little bit toxic um okay so uh, no more questions I see. Uh, Toby, thanks again for having your talk here with us and uh, have a good day and uh, see you again. Bye bye. Thanks. RC3.